Welcome back guys to WebDev Mobile Dev and in this fit tutorial on our full course on HTML and CSS for beginners we are going to be building our first website so we are going to create different web pages add text and images to these web pages create links between these web pages so that we will see how to move from one web page to another on this our website So we are going to be creating these different web pages and we will start by creating the index.html page. Afterwards we will create the page 1 and we are going to create our page 2. We are going to add text and images to these different web pages individually. Then we are going to create now links between these different web pages. So the index.html page is going to have a link which is going to permit us to navigate to this other page. And we are going to be able to navigate back to this index.html page. We are also going to be able to navigate from the index.html page to page 2 and back to the index.html page. So in this tutorial, we are going to see how to create these links between these web pages, see how to add these different text and images to these web pages, and the, the, the new HTML elements we are going to be seeing in this tutorial. Okay, let's go ahead and start programming our first website. Remember in the previous tutorial, I created our first web page, and in this tutorial, I will be creating our first website. I went when I hit and downloaded images we are going to be using for our first website. So let's go ahead and create our folder. We are going to call first website. So we are going to open this folder with VS Code. And after I open this folder in VS Code, we are going to create the first file which is the index.html file which, are, which is the entry point to this our website so we create our index.html so we are going to start with the doc type declaration to indicate that this is an html page and we are going to have now the html html element. In the HTML element we usually have the head and the body. So we are going to come to the head now and put the title to this our web page, to this our website. So this web page is going to have a title of let's just see front end. Let's just see my first website, no problem. My first website. Okay, after that in the title, we are going to come now to the body and put the, the heading H1, which is the biggest heading to this our website. We are going to call it front end web development. Okay, we can put a paragraph to see how things are going to be. Let's just say front end web development is usually where most developers start their journey okay so we have the basic skeleton of, of the first index.html so let's go ahead and open it with the live server which we downloaded in the previous tutorial so if we open this in live server, we see our heading from the web development and we see the paragraph we entered. So let's go ahead now and add an image to this website, to this web page. So let's add the image. Let's first of all take a look at, let's first of all describe the, the image element. We are going to see that it's different from the, the normal HTML elements. So let's, let's describe it first of all. So if you remember in the previous tutorial, we looked at HTML elements and we saw that the general structure is the element is going to have the opening tag, the content and the closing tag. So we have the opening tag name here, the closing tag name and the content. We saw examples of the paragraph which we just used now. We saw that the paragraph had the opening tag, the content, the closing tag and we also used the heading. We saw that it had those tags, opening, closing and content. But there is this concept in HTML known as self-closing tags. Self-closing tags have only one tag, which is the opening tag. 
The image element is an example of a safe closing tab. It has only the opening tab. The other ones such as the line break and the horizontal line elements which you are going to see. Let's focus now on the HTML element, the image element. These are now concept known as attributes in, in HTML. And what how the attributes function is the general syntax is in the opening tag of an HTML element, you can give an attribute name and give the attribute a value. The image element is one of such elements which uses the attribute and it's very important because for every image we know we need to specify the source of the image. Where is the image coming from? Is this image we are going to load on our website from our file system or from another website on the internet? We have to indicate to the web browser where the image is going to be coming from. So you have the source attribute and the image. We are also going to be taking a look at the the link element, the, the anchor element. The anchor element has also another attribute known as the href that indicates the website or the other web page that we want to link to. Another example of such attributes is the id attribute, which helps us identify elements on a web page uniquely. You know that on a web page you can have many of the same elements. There can be many H1s, there can be many images, many, but for you to be able to uniquely identify the element, you can give it this ID attribute. This ID attribute is going to be able to make us now uniquely identify this element on, on our website. Let's take a deeper look at the image element which we are going to be adding soon to our web page. There are basically two ways we can add an image to a web page. The image can either be coming from another website on the internet or the image can be coming from a local file system. So what you have to do is you come to the source attribute, in the value you are going to precise. If it's coming from another website on the internet, you precise the URL to access the image on the website. And if the image is coming from your local file system, you precise the relative part to the image on your file system we are going to see that we are going to see how to, to use these two approaches in in this tutorial so let's go ahead and add an image to our website well, first of all we're going to be using the first approach which is adding the image from another site on the internet so back here let's add now the image to our website you can add the image by using this image this image This image element in HTML. So this image element, as we saw, is is simply a self so a self closing tag, meaning it has only the opening tag. There is no closing tag to it. So what you do is you come to the image and, as we saw, you put source. You precise the source and it's the source to the image. The first thing we want to do is we want to include an image from the internet, from another website on the internet. And if we let's come and take this image on on the internet for example if you want to include this image to our website what you do is you are going to copy this link to the image on the website then we head back to our HTML document and we paste that link there after saving let's save now and see whether the image displays on our website you see that the image displays actually on our website as we as we knew it had to display as displayed on our website so the image is on our website but we see that it's actually large and it's not it's not what we would like to have on the website we would like the image to have good dimensions so what we we'll do is we can add other attributes to the image element and the attributes are going to be able to reduce the dimensions of this image and basically those attributes are the width and the height attributes to help us size the image to a particular width and height. So let's head back to our index.html document and precise the width and height of this document. Let's give it a width of say let's say 150 or 250 pixels and a height of um, let's say let's just say 150 pixels and see what and see what it looks like. So 
So we see that it's not bad. It's better than, than the previous. And it gives us, we can see the full image on our website. So that's how we can add an image to, to our website. It just besides the location, the URL of the image on the on another website. You can give it a width attribute and a height attribute. Let's go ahead and add another image to this web page. And this time around, let's add an image from our local file system. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We put the image element, put the image, and we're going to have the source of this image this time around. As I will see, the source of this image this time around is going to be from our file system. So let's go ahead and pick the image from our file system. So as I explained to you, I went ahead and already downloaded some images we are going to use for this tutorial. And let me just move now these images to get them and move them to, to this folder. And what we can do is we can create a folder here which you can call images for our website. Images. And in this folder, we can put the images for our website. So back here in VS Code, we have now the folder images, which contains the images we are going to be using for this website. And that's how it's good to structure your, your folders in this way. We have different folders for different categories of elements that you are going to be using for the website. So now we have these images and we see that for us to access an image in this, in this website or at the level of the index.html file, we we'll need to move into images then pick the image you want to use. So that's exactly what we are going to be doing here. So that's how we move relative to the index.html file. So let's say, for example, we want to pick the image. Um, let's just call this, this font end image. So the way to access that image is we are going to be going to the index, sorry, into the images folder, images slash. You see that? That way you propose us the image. Can pick the front end image and now that image is going to load so let's save and see whether we get that image on our website and that's it we see the image actually on our website the only issue is the image is still large as as we previously so we can still take this image width and height attributes and put them here and save and after saving with the width and height, we see that the web page looks a lot better. Let's continue with our web page after adding the images. Let's add the paragraph. So let's let's see a heading. A heading this time around an H2 because it has to be smaller than the than the main heading. And here we are going to be saying become a web developer. Let's just keep it the heading become a web developer okay after this heading let's put the paragraph um what can we see here okay let's see the uh tv main sorry main languages You have to learn to become a web let's say font in a font in web developer and these languages languages are html css and javascript okay we save and see how it looks at it looks like on our website so we see the next h2 which is smaller than the h1 and that's logically logically makes sense and we have now our paragraph what we just added so that's it for our first index.html page now we need to create the other pages the the other pages one and pages two. 
So let's say we want to create now another page which we can describe what HTML is and we can also describe what CSS is. And we are going to be able to link to those other pages from our index.html page. So let's go ahead and create those two pages first of all. And it's good to structure our files well. So what we we'll do is we are going to create another folder which we are going to call pages. And this folder we can create now a new file. The first one, let's call it the um, HTML page. HTML page dot html wrong it's a bit funny but yeah since i send html page yeah so i did dot html the next page is let's call it css page which is the page in which we'll be describing css dot html yeah let's call it that okay we want to be able to link from this index of html page to this other pages let's first of all create the content for this new page let's call it the let's start normally with a doc type declaration doc type we have html we have head body title html page And the content here let's give it a heading one of html let's just say html html okay that's it and let's give this other one also some content this other css piece some content okay we can leave this first html page with this content and see how we have to do to link this page to another page for me one of this page is basically just going to have a heading one which is going to say html so let's see whether we can access this page from can link to this page from the index of html page so what we have to do to be able to link that is to use another html element called the the anchor element so let's let's detail explain what the anchor element is all about before applying it in this uh in this uh, code so if you remember earlier when we were talking of html attributes we mentioned that there is this anchor element that can permit all us link to other pages and it has an attribute the href attribute that is going to indicate to which page we are linking to then we have now the content of the anchor element which is basically the label to the different to the page we are linking to so this anchor element has different types of links. You can either be linking to another website on the internet or you can be linking to another web page on your website. So presently we are linking to another web page on our website, but we are also going to see how to link to another website on the internet. So what you do is in the anchor element, in the opening tag, you introduce this href attribute. This href stands for hypertext reference and it basically references the other page to which you are linking to if you are linking to another page on the internet you specify the url to that page on the internet this one is basically the content which is going to be displayed on the plow on the browser the link the user knows when he clicks to is going to take him to this to this page for the other one which is linking to other web pages on your website the same thing each way but you just precise now the relative part to that page on your website so we are going to be seeing how these two work on our website so let's go ahead and introduce this anchor element so we are going to give the a And in this A, this anchor element, we have to precise first of all the href. Where are we linking to? Okay, let's say we want to link to this HTML page.html. What we have to enter here is the relative part as, as we did with the image. For the image, we saw we have to enter the images folder and pick the image. It's the same thing we'll be doing here. We are going to enter this pages folder and pick the the 
page so we are going to say pages slash you see we have now the choice to pick we don't really have content for the css page so let's take the html page we have content for and here we are going to precise now the label which is going to be shown on our web browser let's see learn more about html yeah let's just see learn learn more or let's just learn about html and see if that so if we go now back to our web page you see that we have this link here and when you hover over over the link it shows you that it's going to be linking to that page on your website and we can now click on this link and we see that it navigates us to our html page that's the title we give and this is the content html we can go back to the previous page and that's our main page so that's basically how links work and let's also take a look at how to navigate to another website on the internet let's see you want to navigate to youtube.com for example so let's add another anchor element let's just see e and see inside here. let's see um watch videos on youtube <laughs> watch videos on youtube then here we are going to precise now the sorry inside here each each way we see um http so this one is actually the the link to youtube.com so http two dot slash slash youtube.com hope hope that in that is correct and now if you come here we see watch videos on youtube and if you click on this link it's going to navigate you to youtube and that's actually how linking on web pages work okay let's go back and and see how to continue our, webs our website okay i have seen how to link to different pages on our website and how to link to another page on the internet so we can continue with our website and basically we'll just be adding content now to this website to make it more at least more substantial so we can get rid of this other link which was explained to us how to link to other web pages on the internet and we can add another link to link now to our css page which we are going to add content to so to link to our css page we need to enter pages but in this case we are going to have now a css page which is here css page.html so now it's going to be learn about CSS. Learn about CSS. So I'm going to save it. So I'm going to come now to the CSS page and give it some content. I'm going to have the doc type declaration. Doc type. Sorry. Doc type declaration. We have the HTML. We have the head, we have the body, we have the title, we have the paragraph, then heading. We can give the title and the heading the same, the same names. Or you just see it, then CSS, then CSS, and you will see CSS, CSS. So for CSS, so let's just see one web page to be attractive. Style them with CSS. Let's just give it a paragraph. Makes sense. I want your web pages to be attractive. Style them with CSS. We can also add now another image to this image. We get first of all an image from the internet. Let's get an image from the internet. And now we just add some images here. 
to run for CSS, we can get this copy it and put it here and give it a width and a height width of let's say 250 pixels I'll give it a height of 150 pixel can get another image now from our file system image I'm going to give this image a source as usual this image now is going to be coming from our file system so it's going to be from the images folder slash in this case we are getting this image CSS TV CSS TV dot PNG so we can save that now and see what it looks like so we are going to head back to our normal index.html page in our index.html page we added this link to go to our CSS page and from there we are going to be able to see the content this content in our CSS page so let's take a look at that and see so learn about CSS this is the link we added so if you click here learn about CSS you see that it links you now to our CSS page but we have a broken image and why is this image broken let's take a look at why this image is broken but we still have our heading we have the paragraph we entered we have the image and this image is the first image from from the internet this other image is that from our file system which is broken so let's take a look at why it's broken and fix the error so if we head back to our css page so we have image and yeah it has to be broken so this is another thing we need to look at if you remember the image source here is relative to the folder to the file we are working in previously we were in the index.html file and because we're in the index.html file to access the image we need to come to the image folder means at the same level of the image file we have the images folder so we have to pick the images folder and come into and pick now the front end image so let's let's take a look at that so we have to enter the images folder which we see here then we get this front end image and that's the, the next part but when we are in the css in the css file we notice that the css file is inside this pages folder so it's not directly at the same level of the images folder so to be able to access this this css image when you are in the css file what you have to do is you have to first of all come up one level that's climb up one level back behind to the pages folder before you come now to the image folder and get the image you want to display on the web on the website so this part here is is not correct this part to access this css file is not correct the first thing we have to do is we have to come up one level by putting this double slash slash and you see now that it proposes us now the correct part so you have to come up one level first of all which is from the css file you come up one level to the pages then now we are the level of these pages which is at the same level of the image we can now come into the image and get the image and if now we save this we are going to see that our css the next image for css is going to display and we see that as it displaying since that is very large we can we can give it the width and the height let's give it the width of um, let me just give it 150 and let's give it the height of let's say 100 and if we see if we see that we see that it displays let's give the opposite let's instead give it a height of 150 since as it looks taller than and give it a width of 100 and see if yeah see that it looks a lot better so we have resolved the error 
So we need to take note of the fact that the image is relative to the file in which we are working. Okay. We can add now some more information just to make this page look a lot more substantial. So let's see dissecting. Let's give you an H2. Dissecting. Dissecting CSS. CSS. I'll give it paragraph. The CSS can be added to a website very easily. You can add CSS inline, inline in the head element. Create a create create an external CSS file. So we're going to see how to to work with CSS in the next tutorial. So this one is just scratch on the surface, and at least we have some additional content. So let's add now. Let's add now a link that is going to permit us to get back to the previous to the, to the index.html file. And let's, let's add the link. So, you notice that the CSS file and all this is what we call relative parts. So, you have to, it's good you understand what relative parts is all about. So, we see that we are in the CSS file at this level. I want to get back to the index.html file. So what we have to do is we have to we have to come out of this folder and be at the level of pages. So we have to move one step above, and we know that we move out of the folder using the dot dot. So we're going to use the dot dot to move out of this folder, and we we will position ourselves at the level of these pages. We can now access the index.html page, and that's going to permit us move out of the CSS page back to the index.html page. So let's 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 apply that. So I'm going to put the anchor element here. I'm going to put the anchor element here, and I'm going to have the href. Href. Um, and let's say get go back to home. Let's say back back to home, and this one is to go back to the home page. So yeah, we have now to put that relative part. So as we said, we have to move out of the folder first of all. Then we can now pick now our index.html page. Sorry, index.html page. And that's it. From the CSS page now, we can move back to the HTML page. And if we save and we go now to our file, we see this link go back to home. And if we click on this go back to home, it navigates us back to the to the index.html page. And it's the same thing we are going to do if we are doing the, the HTML page. We can add those images using relative parts and we can also get back to the index of HTML page from, from the HTML page. So that's it. We have our website. Let's just add some content for the index.html page, which is for the, sorry for the HTML page, which is just some bare bone structure at the moment. So let's see a paragraph. Let's see one to so, structure structure of a page is better. Then about HTML. And about HTML, let's add some images. Let's get an image first of all from the internet, an HTML image. Let's give the image some. No, sorry, the image. Sorry, <laughs> here I'm adding an image and I'm using the 
here is an image we are adding not each fence so the image is just a single tag and it's not each wave here it's source or image and it's just an opening tag so that's for the image and let's add another image from our file system now the the logo for html5 so let's say image and we're going to have source and we are going to be taking this other this html5 image this time around so as we saw using relative parts if we are the level of the html page which is inside here we have to first of all come out to be at the level of pages then we are out of this we can get now the images folder and come inside and get the, the html5 image so we are inside here the html file we have to come out first of all dot dot slash and we are out we can go now into the images folder and get the image and that's it so we are going to have now those two images if we save control key save control s we come now to our web page so we see learn more about html if we click here to learn more about html we see that it loads our two pages our two our two images the first image from the internet and the other image from our local system images are quite large so let's resize them giving them width and height attributes width of this one should be let's give it to 50 and the height and the height of 150 let's give this other one since as this one is longer we are going to give it a width of 100 sensors and a height of 150 because of the dimensions and let's save this and see how it looks that it looks a lot better you can come now and give another heading to a smaller heading the dissecting dissecting html Sorry, dissecting HTML. And what we are going to do here is we are just going to describe HTML a bit. So, what we'll say is sorry, this image has to be above. This image has to be above the heading. And what we'll say here is HTML is a symbol language to learn it is all about knowing the html elements we will be learning about html elements and how to nest these elements so just some just some some text to describe html and after that we can now see we want to link now back to the index of the html page which is our home page so we are going to have now an anchor element here and we are going to have an h wave which is linking back and since as we are in the html page we need to come out back to be at this level of pages so the index of the html page is inside here so we need to first of all come out then we can now see the index of the html page since as our html page is inside here so all we need to do now is we are going to come out first of all and we can now see our index page and that's it let's say go back home back to home and see and now we have now this link here back to home if we click there it navigates us back to our our home page so we now have our website complete we have the different pages we have images and we have our main page which is our index.html from our index.html page 
you see the images, the text, and we have learn more about HTML. It takes also our HTML page. We can go back to the home page. We can also learn more about CSS. It takes also the CSS page. And we can go back to our home page. So we have the workflow of the website up and running. And there is one more thing I would like to explain for this tutorial, and it's how to create new tabs at the top. You notice that everything is happening on the same tab and we may not want to so you may not want to navigate and change all the content only on one tab so let's if we add the underscore blank we see that it's going to create new tabs for every new click to move to a new link so let's say let's say for example a user is on your site and maybe you don't want the user to navigate out of your site so that's the, the best use case for, for the attribute I'm going to be showing now. Let's say from the index.html page, you want the user to learn more about. Sorry, I'm at the index.html page now. And maybe you want the user to learn about something from another website. They are linking to something on our website. And let's say maybe you want the user to learn more about, let's say, um, learn more and go tag. And here you want him to learn more about, let's say, maybe HTML from Google. And you say you want him to navigate to Google, for example, but you don't want him to quit your site. So, what you do is you are going to have the, the link here. Since I was linking to another page on the internet, you have the URL to that page. Let's say you want to link to google.com. And here we say um, http slash google.com. That's just an example, and inside here now we see learn about HTML and CSS from Google, something of that sort. So learn, learn from Google, from Google. <laughs> then we see. If. So we have this other link, learn from Google. So the issue now here is, if the user clicks on this link, learn from Google. You see that it's going to navigate the user completely out of your site and maybe you don't like the that experience it's not the best because it takes the user completely away from your site and the user may need to go back and before you can see your site which is not the best so what you what you can do is you can add an attribute to this href called the target attribute when you add this target attribute, you can specify now a value of underscore blank. This underscore blank is going to permit the creation of a new tab, so the user is not going to navigate away from your site. Let's 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 look at this. So we see now that if the user clicks now on learn from Google, it creates a completely new tab, and your site is still on is still so it's still on the other side, and the user can easily switch between the two tabs without completely completely navigating away from your site and you see that the html and css pages still behave in the same way so let's let's make the html and css page pages to create new tabs on clicking on there we are going to add this target attribute underscore blank to the two hrefs the two anchor elements And now the user is never going to navigate away from your site. Neither is a new page is going to change on the same tab. So if the user clicks on learn about HTML, it creates a completely new tab. If the user is here and it clicks on learn about CSS, it creates a completely new tab. So the user can easily view the different pages on your website on different tabs. CSS, you can see CSS. HTML, you can see HTML if you want, then Google simply. But the best experience is for completely new sites, sites that are different from your website. That's the best use case where you don't want the user to navigate away from your site completely. Um, so that's 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 it for this tutorial. And the next tutorial we are going to be explaining everything about CSS. So in this website, in this tutorial, we saw our website and we have not applied more styling to this website. So you see that it's just basic black and white text, no background color and nothing styled to the website. 
In the next tutorial, we are going to be learning about CSS. So we are going to start styling this our uh, this our uh, website to look a lot better. So in summary of this tutorial and what we learned from this tutorial, we saw how to create a website with images and links between web pages. We saw how to add images originating from other websites. We saw how to add images originating from your own local file system. With this, we saw to link relatively from one file to another. That's picking the image relative to the file in which you are found. We saw how to link to other sites on the internet. And we saw how to link to other pages on your website. That's using the, the anchor element. Here we, here we use the anchor element and here we use the image element. Those were the two main elements we were looking at in this tutorial. So if you add value from this tutorial, consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the like button that encourages me to release more tutorials. And in our next tutorial in this series, we are going to be looking at CSS.